I'm going to break down the SoRare scoring matrix, explain everything you need to know about rewards, and show you exactly what it takes to beat the game and get thresholds out of All Star Rare every game week. I've been playing this game and making tutorials for the last two and a half, three years, and I've had thousands of messages from people when they're starting out. So I know all the details that make the biggest difference to people when they're starting out and really accelerate them on the path to success and avoiding all those beginner mistakes that almost everyone is making. So they all love the content here at the channel and they give me a special link. That link is in the description of this video. If you've not opened your account yet, by clicking that link, you will get a free card once you've bought five from the market. The free card, you can keep it, you can sell it, you can do whatever you want with it. The five you buy from the market, they could cost a quid, they could cost a hundred quid, it doesn't matter either. It's the best way to sign up, it's the way everyone signs up. And if you sign up, play so rare, and you don't get that free card, you're one card behind everyone else. By doing so you will support the channel and help all the content here and I thank you in advance if you do so. In this video I assume you've got all your common cards and you've went through all the account opening process. If you haven't yet done that, the first video in this playlist is the video you want to be watching. Getting straight into it, probably one of the best things about SoRare is the scoring matrix, is how the game actually works. I've played lots of different fantasy football games over the years, whether it be actual like FPL, Dream Team, that kind of thing, or things like Football Manager, or FIFA Ultimate Team, and all these things have got different elements that, as a football fan, I really enjoy, and I think everyone does enjoy, but... There's always players in these different games that are just broken, that work super well because they're fast and they're quicker. They've got a really high underlying potential. They take penalties. They're always selected. You know, different. every game has its own metrics. It breaks the game. And the Soraya score matrix has people that do... Uh, suit it better than others certainly but the way they've formulated it is literally every player on the pitch has a genuine chance of scoring as many points as anyone else. Now they need to play a good match and they need to be really good at football but what Soraya did which I think is absolutely genius for their player ratings is they broke it into two segments okay so we've got the decisive score that's all the major things that happen in the match the positive decisive scores that we're looking for in our players is goals, assists, penalties won, a clearance off the line, goalkeepers get it for a clean sheet, penalty save, again for a goalkeeper, or a last man tackle, which anyone can have. Now, if you have a positive decisive score, then that makes a concrete change to your score that nothing else can influence except for a negative decisive score. There's only five of them, red cards, own goals, conceding a penalty, error led to goal, and if a goalkeeper concedes three or more, that's a negative decisive action. Every time your player gets a positive decisive action, they move up the decisive ladder. Now, if your player actually stacks up negative decisive actions, then their score does go backwards as well from 35 to 15, okay? But what your decisive score when you're at level zero and when you're at level minus one, it's not guaranteed, okay? So that means other scores, other things going on in the game can reduce the score from below 35 and from below 15. So positive decisives get you stapled in and rock solid guaranteed scores, but failing that, you're really at jeopardy of positive and negative actions on the pitch. But if your player stacks up negative decisive actions, they get a red card, they give away a penalty, they concede, you know, they do all this stuff, then their decisive score will move backwards from 35 to 15 to 5 to 0, depending on how many of these they stack up, of course. And none of these scores are guaranteed. Like in the decisive actions, when you get to 60, 70, 80, all the bigger scores, because your player scoring goals, making assists, all the good stuff is happening, that score gets stapled in there, no matter what happens with their all-around game. But the 35 points that you start on, and then if you move backwards on the decisive ladder here to level minus one or minus two or minus three, the score is not guaranteed. So that means your all-around score can change that. Now, what the all-around score is, it covers over 30 actions that can happen in a match for all positions of the pitch, and all the points are scored differently for all the different positions on the pitch. So defenders that are doing attacking output get scored really well, and the forwards that are getting defensive output, compared to other forwards, they'll score better. And then there's obviously goalkeeper-specific ones as well on top of that. But because there is so many statistics captured, and they're all weighted differently for whatever position your player is playing in, like I said earlier, genuinely, there is not a better game in world football for giving as many players viability in your team. Whether that be football manager, FIFA, FPL, it doesn't matter. There's so many more players here that can actually contribute in a positive way. Now, on the all-around score, the majority of actions and the majority of points that can be won is quite small and quite nominal. The headline statistic that every really defender and midfielder is searching for is what is known as a double-double 
a double, triple, or a triple, double, or a triple, triple, okay? Now, that's made up of tackles, interceptions, and net duels one stacking together for twos and threes, okay? So if your player gets two tackles and two interceptions, then that is a double-double, and you get bonus points for that. And those actions, for most positions, are actually scored quite high. But what is net duels won, okay? So when you look at your SO5 scores, you'll see duels lost and duels won, okay? So it's the difference between those two numbers. If you've got duels lost at seven and duels won at nine, your player has been involved in 16 duels, they've won two more. They're net up two. So if we add that in with our two interceptions and our two tackles, we're now on a triple double and we get bonus points for that. But for every individual position, there will be a statistic that's a wee bit heavier weighted and they're the statistics that potentially the ones that are the players that are more suited to the matrix tend to tap into a little bit more. Durian Timber in defence is a great example because for Ajax and how dominant they are on the pitch, as a centre-back, he's making a lot of passes geographically in the opposition half and geographically tend to be in the final third. So as a centre-back, he racks up millions of final third passes, which for a centre-back, as you can imagine, score very well. For midfielders, you are really looking for players that can do a bit of everything because the all-around score has got so many different statistics in it. If you've got midfield players that can get a tackle or two, make a couple of chances, get into the box, complete a bunch of passes, can do a bit of everything, then when they do get that one decisive action, let's say they build up an all-around score from that matrix of... 12 points or something they then go and get their assist that then with their 60 and their 12 gives them a score of 72 so midfielders in particular this, this kind of goes for all positions but midfielders in particular they can get an all-around score of 15 and above which isn't really that incredible considering the amount of statistics that are covered here those ones when they couple that with goals assists any positive decisive action those are amazingly valuable midfielders to have not necessarily one outstanding statistic for midfielders and for forwards of course it's all about decisives because the all-around game as you can see for forwards is quite small compared to the other positions, isn't scored terribly well. You're looking for forwards, primarily in my experience, that dribble. You want guys that are on the wing. Jota, Mbappe, Messi, guys like this that will take their man on a dribble, get into the box, make a shot, make an attempt to assist, do those kind of actions. Those are the forwards that get a good all-around score of 10 points or more. And if they can get a goal and an assist or two goals or even just one goal or whatever, they can be the most powerful forwards to have on the scoring matrix. The goalkeepers have been recently revamped and updated. So their matrix now is actually far more robust than it's ever been before. And goalkeepers for the first time are really capable of getting big scores of above 75 on a regular basis. If their team is against all the odds and facing all the shots they make tons of saves they keep the clean sheet they save a penalty they do any of these things then we've seen goalkeepers scoring better and better and they've became much more of a power position in the really big stakes leagues in particular they can also be great for the market if you can identify a keeper that's probably about to score well now that they've made a transfer now that they're number one because goalkeepers that can score big and play consistently are always great to have in this game and there's never been a better time to get a good goalkeeper really now that we know that the next thing we need to understand a bit better is rewards okay now all are coming different scarcities. The yellow ones are limited, reds are rare, blue are super rare, and blacks are unique. Okay, and you generally need these cards to win these cards for the most part. Limiteds at the moment are the most exciting cards because they can win rares. Rare are kind of the best scarcity to run in. More people enjoy them, they hold good value, and the rewards they can win are amongst the best, including the thresholds, which we'll come to shortly in the video. Now, on every game week, when you come into the match day center, all the divisions will be listed on this page here that are available, and they're all color coded very nicely alongside whatever cards you need to compete in them uh, for the division. So you can, you can see here All-Star in red, that's for rares, and then we've got All-Star up here in yellow, that's for the limiteds. And then over here, the middle category tells you what's on offer if you can win in this division. So we can see how many cards, what scarcity they are, as well as how much money is available if you were to hit the podium and get into the cash places as well. The star tier cards are the stars of the world game. You know, it is Messi, it's Ronaldo, it's Haaland, it's Mbappe. It's all the biggest and best players. But also, it is a big... A reward pool that is a big prize category and also in the star category you will get players that are just really good at the game you might never have heard of them before but if they are in the star category they've got something about them and they're worth having tier ones are just a step down from stars basically so they probably there's a higher chance you'll be familiar with them they'll be a very very good player in the game there'll be almost no mistake of that at all feeling that they're maybe injured or something unforeseen and then when you get into the tier twos and the tier threes these are just more of the kind of undesirables you know maybe they're not a star name a household 
Courtney, maybe they don't play for a big team, maybe they're even injured, you know, in the tier threes, our guys generally aren't playing or doing very well. Tier twos should be guys most of the time that are playing, but they're maybe not superstars, or maybe they're just back from an injury, because so rare when they're categorising all these cards, they take into consideration how they score in the game, as well as their market value, because they don't want somebody getting into the wrong price tier, you know, if you earned a tier one, you want it to be worth something, because you've probably built a really good team, and you should be rewarded as a result. Now, everyone wants different things from rewards. I personally attack rewards for the stuff I want to win. I want to win the stuff that I can't afford to buy. I want to win the players that I enjoy watching. That I want to play them in my fantasy teams for next week and roll on and roll on. I also really like winning guys that fit that profile, but maybe I don't like and maybe somebody else does and I can sell them into the market and then go and buy somebody else that I want or withdraw the money or do whatever. In order to maximize any of those experiences, you need to know where those rewards are and where the easiest place to win them is. Now, if you're looking for easy wins and you're looking to get rewards into your club very quickly, targeting tier twos is probably the best place to go for. Too many people set their sites up at star level and get disappointed very quickly. This could be at limited, rares, super rares, any division you care to think about. I think when you aim for tier twos, you can always be pleasantly surprised. And with the way that the so rare platform is developing, the prize pools feel like they're getting bigger and bigger. There's more and more divisions becoming available. And having a team that's capable of on a regular basis getting in amongst it is a great starting position for no matter what develops in your so rare journey. Now, since I recorded the first part of this video, Sora have announced the new format for e-thresholds for the remainder of the 22-23 season. And I've got to say, my socks were blown straight off my feet. A lot of people speculated and were quietly worried that thresholds were going to be removed from the game. Before, they were only available in the rare division and they paid out $25 or $50 of Ethereum, depending on how high you scored. But not only is that staying, but it's been improved upon and it's going to be moved into a division called Capped Mode 240. And the most amazing thing about this division is it's cross scarcity. So it's available for players on all budgets. If you're buying limited cards in this division, you can earn an ETH threshold of $5 every game week. At rare level, the only payout now that's there is the $50. But at super rare level, there's a new introduction as well where there's $100 a game week available. And up at the unique level, if you get the bankroll for the big cards, $250 a game week can be yielded out of this cap mode 240. Now, we've just explained everything you need to know about the matrix and how the scoring system works. And what Soraya do for this cap mode 240 is they judge every player on their average score across the last 15 matches. You then have to build a team of five players that fit 240 points or below is a total for their last 15 average of 0 to 100. By that team scoring 250 points with no XP, no captain bonuses or anything like that, you will then get that threshold paid out to you. Now, this probably will change and be tweaked, maybe even throughout the remainder of the 22-23 season ever so slightly, depending on if it's too hard or too easy to win. Um, at, but one of the best things about the announcement that we got, because like I said, there was a lot of quiet speculation that this was going to be removed from the game, is that the noises from within so rare themselves and this announcement is that this is going to be a main part of the so rare experience, which I find absolutely incredible. The thresholds are often used up to this point to strengthen and enhance your teams as like an in-game currency. And maybe, yeah, you stack up a few of them and you want to make a withdrawal and treat yourself or something, right? But with this being available at all budgets for the level it's available at, this is really game-changing for football fans around the world. Like, if you spend money on gambling, FIFA, any of this stuff that I used to spend money on, then you will have so much more fun spending money once on cards and players that you really enjoy backing every week to score goals and be great for their team. And then equally, the money that can come back out of that threshold now, particularly at super rare level, and I suppose at rare level, this point stands now that it's set there for this next period of time. You could save up and buy a season ticket. You could buy Champions League tickets. You could go to your local team. You can actually engage with football with this money once you've bought those cards and you've had, you're, you're having fun with them playing fantasy football. So the thresholds now, I think, are wildly exciting for the armchair fan, as it were. And I think that because this division is based around cap, you can play with any player you want. You can trade in and out of different players. And like I've spoke about on other beginner content in this playlist, the ratio of three outfielders to one goalkeeper for each position 
is kind of the, the the squad you need to build, which for a lot of passive fans is much more fun than forever buying and selling players because their scores are going up and down. The most expensive part of tackling this division has always been and will be the goalkeeper because playing goalkeepers, there are just fewer of them in world football because there's only one pair team versus like three strikers and four defenders. And the general advice always is, if you're watching this and you're brand new, is make a short list of some number two goalkeepers that you have identified as they've got the, they've got the stuff to be a number one. Maybe they used to be a number one somewhere else. Maybe they've been vocal that they want to be a number one one day. That kind of idea. Because backup keepers will push for moves, will push for transfers. And on so rare, virtually every division in the world is covered. The only two you really need to avoid is anything in the Middle East in Greece. If they go to the second division in Germany, the second division in Italy, if they go to America, if they go to Peru, if they go to China, it's covered. Any number two backup goalkeeper that you think's got, the, got something to be a number one one day, that would be a great pickup. This mode starts from the 31st of January and goes on. So depending on when you're watching this video, you could have a nice run-up time to really experiment and really try and feel your way around how the thresholds will work in terms of what scores you require and what sort of players we're going to fit that mode for you. The only thing that's unknown about this capped mode at this point is what the card rewards will be. There is card rewards that will be coming out. And on top of that, if you look at the, the Medium article here, a lot of the things that they're talking about is that they want to there's more to come, you know, so this is fantastic for me and I think this thresholds will be very appealing to many football fans around the world for a number of different reasons, but there's more to come. And why I'm so excited about all of this stuff that I've explained to you today is because of the latest innovations that we've seen in the reward pool. In the Global Cup, which was Soria's big promotion uh, competition for the World Cup, the top five people are getting an all-expenses paid trip to play football with Zinedine Zidane. We're getting more and more prizes and rewards like this. The big thing with Soria with these NFTs why it is in crypto and there's no getting away from it is we own these cards no one can take them away from us they're officially licensed merchant goods and products and that comes with relationships and that comes with engagement from the clubs and from the players as we move into this future world of fans and, and players being more and more connected players wanting to connect with their fans more and more fans wanting to have a stake in the game want to watch the game without having to put a bet on you know but still want to have something going on it want to play a game like football manager but it actually means something between you and your friends it's just not in your laptop and your wee steam account and only you sees it and it's not like fifa ultimate team where you spend money on it you really research and you know the game busters this guy's great on right wing and this guy's got great chemistry with him and then they bring a new one out and you start again from zero i've got cards on this i've had for three years i've got ferran torres in a valencia shirt i've played him when he was at spain i've played him when he was at man city i've played him when he was at barca i've had that thing for three years i only spent money on it once that is one of the real differences here and why the gameplay is so exciting and with the cards i own i'm really excited to see all these future innovations come out and i'm really excited to start chasing down some of these money can't buy things that are going to be coming into this game i hope you've enjoyed this gameplay introduction on my channel I've got tons of other stuff for beginners and for advanced players. I do live streams once or twice a week and I always take questions from the live chat. So if you've enjoyed anything today, if you've got any questions, just hit me up on a live chat or drop a comment down below. If at any point in the video, if you did laugh, learn or like something, then please do like and subscribe, share and retweet and all that good stuff. Stay out of trouble and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.